HIV, the virus with multiple changing faces. Carla is a 27-year-old student. She loves music and horse riding, chatting with her grandmother and sister, and meeting with friends. But there are days when she feels quite sick because of the side effects of the 10 pills she has to take every day. Carla is infected by the human immunodeficiency virus, commonly known as HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. She got it from her mother during breastfeeding. Nowadays, thanks to advances in science, mother-to-child transmission is normally prevented by treating the mother with a combination of antiretroviral drugs. But there are other potential ways of HIV transmission. Injecting drug addicts could also be infected due to the reusing of needles, as well as piercing and tattoo lovers. People receiving blood transfusions could get it if infected blood is directly transferred from one person to another, or anyone who had an open wound, which came into contact with infected blood, also could become infected. But the most common way of becoming infected with HIV is practicing unprotected sex. Today, there are still over 35 million people living with HIV worldwide. And every year, 2.3 million people become infected. Advances in treatment have made their life easier and reduced mortality, but there is still no cure for them. We shouldn't think this is not going to happen to me, because, as the joint United Nations Programme on HIV AIDS, UN AIDS, reported in 2013, in several countries that have experienced significant declines in new HIV infections, disturbing signs have emerged of increases in sexual risk behaviours among young people. HIV has many faces. In Africa, 59% of infected people are women. In Europe, 30%. And most of them do not belong to groups traditionally known to be at higher risk, like sex workers and their children men who have sex with men, and people who inject drugs into themselves. Daniel and Wanda are a very young couple learning to love each other. In this beautiful path, preventing HIV transmission should be a main lesson, because it is spread when virus-containing secretions from the infected person come into contact with genital, oral or rectal mucosal membranes of the uninfected partner. And this is it. Our main character, HIV, a member of the retrovirus family, a group of viruses which live by inserting a copy of their own genetic material into our cell's DNA. This is then treated as if it were our own genes and uses the machinery of our cells to make new viruses, which can then infect other cells. HIV mainly infects the cells of the immune system that we use to eliminate infections a type of white blood cells called CD4 plus lymphocytes. During the first weeks following exposure to the virus, massive replication of the virus takes place, resulting in high virus level in blood. Then the infected person goes through a stage with no symptoms, which is known as clinical latency. During this time, the number of CD4 lymphocytes decreases steadily, and by the time symptoms are noticed, the individual has less than 300 of them, while an uninfected person has between 500 and 1,000. At the same time, there is an increasing level of virus in the blood and lymph nodes, leading to the beginning of the symptomatic phase, which includes the progression to AIDS, the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Most untreated people with HIV eventually develop AIDS, and if they still do not receive treatment, they usually die from opportunistic infections or cancers that occur when the immune system is too weak to overcome them. Since the virus was first identified by scientists at the Pasteur Institute in Paris in 1983, thousands of researchers around the world have devoted their efforts to find a cure for HIV. At the moment, there are already multiple treatment options available, called antiretroviral drugs. However, these treatments can only contain the infection, but not eliminate it, which means they must be taken for life. They can also have long-term side effects or lose efficacy over time. Nonetheless, they can block viral replication and prolong the life of millions of infected people, and at the same time, 
they contain the spread of the virus. More people than ever are now receiving life-saving antiretroviral therapy, contributing to steady declines in the number of AIDS-related deaths. Nevertheless, it is still challenging to facilitate antiretroviral drugs to deprived areas where up to one out of three people can be infected. Meanwhile, scientists keep working hard to find the path to a vaccine that could prevent people from becoming infected and to discover new drugs that overcome resistances. In the meantime, while we do not have a cure against this virus, prevention remains the key to contain the pandemic.